Okay, good morning, good chodesh. We're going to learn today about the Kabbalistic meaning of the month of Shvat. Every month of the year has a connection to one of the 12 uh, tribes. It says that the three uh, patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, correspond to the three holidays. And 12 months of the year correspond to the 12 children of Jacob and the um, month of Shvat, which is 11th month of the year, corresponds to Yosef. And this is especially relevant to our generation because this generation, the, the month of Shvat is particularly significant to the Yosef of our generation, the previous rabbi, whose name was Yosef, the anniversary of passing is on the 10th of Shvat. Another element in this month is that Rizal says that every month of the year has a different combination of God's name. God's name has four letters, and there are 12 combinations of God's name uh, because there are two identical letters, letter He. So uh, the a combination of God's name for the month of Shvat is He and a Yud and a Vav and a He. This um, combination is connected to a verse, as all the combinations are. So there's a verse in the end of Parshas Bechukosai, which is the acronym for the four uh, letters of God's name. Parshas Bechukosai um, talks about the laws of giving away to Hashem one-tenth of your animals. Every tenth animal will be given to Hashem. The Torah says that when you come to the tenth animal, you have to give that animal to Hashem. And you can't decide, I'm not giving this animal, I'm going to switch it for a different animal. Whether it's a good animal or it's not a good animal, you shall not switch it. And if you do switch it, then both the original animal, that was the tenth, and the other animal you wanted to switch it with, both animals become holy. So the words switch shall you switch and so shall it be that those words are an acronym for the God's name He and the Yud and the Vav and the He so the obvious question is it's a sin to switch one animal for another animal it's a sin that gives the person the, the, the consequence of this sin is the is the, the la, la, 40 lashes so how could that be something which is representing holiness, representing the energy of the month of Shvat, when really it's talking about something which is a absolute sin? You shall not switch. And if you do switch, then both animals are holy. Why? First of all, it's a sin. Besides for the fact that it's a sin, the four words, taking those four words out, you have you don't have a full sentence. The sentence begins with, Switch shall you, shall you switch, and so shall both animals be holy. But the, the the four words that are extrapolated from this verse to form the acronym of God's name are switch shall you switch, and so shall it be. And full stop. Doesn't doesn't make sense. The, the verse doesn't begin. That the verse doesn't end. And it's talking about a sin. So what does that mean? So there's a third element in the month of Shvat. And God willing, will explain all three. The third element of the Shvat is, the Torah says, that Moshe Rabbeinu, that Moses, before his passing, uh, he started to explain to Jewish people the Torah in 70 languages, and he started to rebuke the Jewish people. This, this happened on the first day of Shvat, in the last year of his life. Uh, and the uh, fact that the Torah mentions the date that this happened shows that this has a connection to this this date. The Torah highlights this is the date that it happened. And more, the fact that it happened the first day of the month of Shvat uh, indicates that it has relationship to the entire month of Shvat because Rosh Chodesh means, the head of the month means, just like the head of the body, it's something which contains within it all the energy of the body. So if this um, happened on the first day of the month of Shvat, there must be a connection between this and the entirety of the month of Shvat. So what are these three concepts? Yosef, this acronym for God's name, and the Torah being explained in 70 languages, Moses rebuking the Jewish people. What is it, what, what's going on over there? So let's go first to Yosef. 
Yosef, when he was born, Rachel famously prayed to God and said, God, please give me Ben Acher, please give me another child. I have one child now. God, please give me one more. So the Talmud in the Medrash say that her request on the surface was to have one more child, but her the deeper meaning of her request was she wanted a son who was who does strange things, like Yeravam. Yeravam, who was uh, the top ten sinners of Israel, he made it to the top of the top ten. He's a reason that we don't have the twelve tribes and many other things. So she was asking, I want to have a child like Yeravam and people like him. Now, a regular mother doesn't ask her child to be a villain, how much more so our matriarch, Rachel, Rachel, why would she be asking to have such a terrible child? What does that mean? So the Tzimach Tzedek explains that the words Bein Acher, which literally mean another child, also mean child stranger. That it is the power of Yosef to help a Jew who feels like they are a stranger and help them discover that they're not a stranger, that they belong to the Jewish people. And this is also in sync with the simple meaning of the verse that she was asking to have another child. Who was the other child that she was going to have? The child she was going to have was Binyamin. When Binyamin was born, the Torah says that Rachel and Jacob disagreed about what kind of child he was or what his name should be. Rachel said his name should be Ben Oni, the son of my pain. And the Zohar says that she thought that Binyamin, because he was causing her to die in childbirth, he was evil. He thought, she thought he was an evil child. Therefore, she called him the son of my pain. And Yaakov, on the other hand, called him Benyamin, the son of my right side. In Kabbalah, right is revelation. The son of my right side means full and total revelation of godliness. So there's two extremes of how to view Binyamin. Is he the son of my right side? Is he total holiness? highest level of holiness, purity, or is he the son of my pain, is he evil? So the answer is that they're both correct. We're talking about a situation in which a person has succumbed to uh, behaving in a way that makes him feel like a stranger to God. And when that person returns to God, what happens is, as the Talmud says, in the place where those who were Bali Tshuva stand, that's how the Gomer cannot stand. In the place where someone who returns to God's stance, his spiritual standing is beyond, completely beyond the ability of a perfectly righteous person to stand. So maybe he came from being the son of my pain, but he becomes the son of my right hand. And that is what Rachel, what Rachel was praying that her son should be, should be someone who helps a Jew who feels estranged and disenfranchised from the Jewish people to become Binyamin, to become a Baal to become connected, not just to become connected as much as uh, another Jew, but beyond. Binyamin, like Yaakov said, the son of my right hand, someone who's, who is in a higher level than a regular person, because a Baal Shuvah can reach a much higher level. This is in sync with the second meaning of the month of Shvat. Shvat is the day that Moshe Rabbeinu translated the Torah into 70 languages. What was the purpose of translating the Torah into 70 languages? Why can't they just study the Torah in Hebrew or in Yiddish? And the answer is that Moshe Rabbeinu foresaw, with divine inspiration, that there will be Jewish people throughout the world, throughout the exile, that will not speak Hebrew, that will not speak Yiddish, and they will study Torah in another language. And they may, they may feel, studying Torah in a different language, that this isn't real, that this isn't true, that this isn't godly, that they are not part of it. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu himself translates the Torah into 70 languages in order to instill in all the Jewish people throughout all, all generations that this is this Torah that Moshe translated himself, that this is God's Torah. Although you're studying the Torah in English and French and Farsi, this is not something else. This is God's Torah. That's why the Torah says about um, the giving of the Torah, it was a great voice and the voice did not stop. And the Talmud explains it extended to all languages. Moshe Rabbeinu himself brings the Torah and translates the Torah into other languages. But the point that needs to be made is, it's not that he um, dilutes the Torah and waters down the Torah, as the Mishnah and Pirkei Avos cautions us, love creatures and bring them close to the Torah. <clears throat> love creatures means even those people 
who have no redeeming value other than the fact that God created them, created them. They're just creatures of God. So you may think, well, in order to, to attract them to Judaism, I need to bring the Torah down to them. The Torah says, don't bring the Torah down to them. Bring them close to the Torah. And this is in sync with the third element of the month of Shvat, Hamer Yimirenu Vahayahu. There is a time when you need to stay in your domain of holiness where you're comfortable being and isolated and insulated in the bosom of holiness and godliness. But there's a time you need to leave. We always read in the month of Shvat the Torah portion of Beshalach. Beshalach ta- and we read it around the 15th of Shvat. The 15th of the month is when the moon is full and represents the full light of the month of Shvat. The war with Amalek that happened on the, um, on the uh, in, in Parsha B'Shalach uh, began in the following way. Torah says the Jewish people were questioning is God with us or not? Now it was really a foolish question. The Talmud gives a parable to explain this question. The Talmud says imagine a father who's carrying his son on his shoulders and his father defends his child from a dog and from other things and takes care of his child. And then one day someone goes over to the child as he's sitting on his father's shoulders and says, hey, where is your dad? And the child says, I don't know where my dad is. I don't know if I have a dad. So then the father takes his child off of his shoulders and a dog attacks the child. And the child is, is, is then recognizes, yes, this is my father. In a similar way, when the Jewish people question, is God with us or not? That's when Amalek attacked us. It was because of their question, because they're doubting God. Doubting God's presence, who, was, who they were seeing opening, open miracles every day, it was their question that brought about the attack of Amalek. But when Amalek attacked them, who did he attack? Torah says that anyone who was, who was in the cloud of Moses, anyone who was with Moses in the cloud, could not be attacked by Amalek. Amalek was prevented by the cloud from attacking anyone. However, there were those people who who were culpable of various transgressions, and the cloud, so to speak, spit them out. And it was those people that Amalek was able to attack. And so the Torah says that who is supposed to go and do battle with Amalek? So Moses went to Yoshua. Yoshua is from the seed of Yosef. He is from the seed of Yosef, whose, whose uh, divine energy is about transforming someone who feels like a stranger and helping them discover they're God's child. He is commanded by God, commanded by Moses, to leave the comfort of the cloud and go out to the, to the person who was in the farthest extreme from him and to reach out to him and help him discover that he isn't a stranger, that he is God's child, that he belongs, and bring him back into, into the cloud of God, the cloud of Moses. The Torah also says about Yeshua specifically that uh, Yosef has the power to attack Amalek. It says uh, Jacob is compared to a fire, and Joseph is compared to a flame, and it is Esau, Esau, who is compared to straw, and Amalek, who is a descendant of Esau, he is, um, Amalek is a descendant of Esau, he is consumed by the fire of Jacob and Joseph. Therefore, Joshua, Yehoshua, he is the one who is commanded to go outside the camp. And, and this is the uh, role that Yosef has in that generation and that the previous Rebbe has in our generation by sending his emissaries throughout the world in all, any place you could think of and places you can't to help Jews discover who they are by not only sending these emissaries but also translating the Torah not just in other languages but in other uh, packages other, other way, in making, it, making it understood and relevant to Jews wherever they are and whatever level that they're on and the Torah also says that when the Jewish people left Egypt, they took with them, Moses took with the Jewish people, the first thing was the bones of Joseph. The idea of the bones of Joseph, it says, the word bone in Hebrew means the essence, the essence of Joseph. In order to be redeemed from the exile, to go out of the exile, they needed to go with the power and the energy of Yosef. It was this that brought them out of the exile then, and it is this that will bring us to the coming of Mashiach, this, this focus on helping Jews discover that they are God's children. And there is a uh, Talmudic 
passage about the foolish chassid, the foolishly pious person. Someone who says, I'm not going to jump into the ocean and save this woman who is drowning because it's not, it's not uh, modest. The, the foolishly pious person who is wearing tefillin and says, I can't jump into the ocean to save this person because I have, I'm, I'm wearing tefillin and tefillin is, is a holy object. I take off the tefillin first. So the Torah says it's a foolishly pious idea. It's pious, but it's foolish. In a similar way, it, it, there is a time when it's good to be insulated and holy, but then there's a time when people are drowning and you can't ask how um, comfortable you are with, with reaching out. You have to think about the people who are, are drowning. And that's the meaning of the acronym of God's name for the month of Shvat. Ordinarily, the holy animal is meant to be holy and transferring its holiness to another animal, taking the holy to, an, to the unholy, is a sin. However, in the month of Shvat, in the inner time of Yosef, then the Torah says, you shall bring the holy to the unholy. What's going to happen to me? So the Torah promises, you shall be how you shall be. That means you're not going to be affected in this exercise, in this effort to reach out to other Jews. If you follow on the path of Yosef, not only will this not hurt you, on the contrary, this will preserve and enhance your own spiritual advancement and sensitivity, and this will help you advance to a higher level yourself. Vahayahu, you shall remain intact. But a person may say, okay, that's a great idea, but who says the person I'm trying to reach out to will even be interested in what I'm going to say to them? So the Torah says, the acronym of Matah Shvat is, it shall be, it doesn't say the end of the verse. Vahayahu, he shall be, discussing the first cow, but doesn't discuss the second cow. It doesn't discuss the actual transfer of holiness to the other cow, which spiritually represents that it's not upon us to ask the question, will I be successful in impacting the other person? The question that we have to ask is, can I do more to reach out to another person? What shall happen? That's not your, your um, role. Your role is to say a chapter of Psalms and ask God for help. And God will for sure give you success. But don't listen to that voice inside you which says, oh, I can't do this. This is something that only a uh, gifted outreach professional can do. Vahayahu, you need to reach out and will happen what, what, what God wants to happen. So this is, again, the, the energy of the month of Shvat. Number one, it's a time when Moses translated the Torah in 70 languages. But it's also a time when Moshe Rabbeinu rebuked the Jewish people. How did Moshe rebuke the Jewish people? He didn't rebuke them uh, when before when they were leaving Egypt and they had to contend with the various countries and nations that, that sought our demise. Rather, Moses told this to the Jewish people after he had saved them from the giants, Sichon and Og and all other nations that sought our destruction. After he helped us and saved us, then Moses helped us. Then Moses, rather, he rebuked us and he told us what we need to do. In a similar way, the Baal Shem Tev taught that the way to reach out to the Jews spiritually is not by um, first giving them over the head and telling them how they have to act better. It's the first step is, is you help, and even when a person comes to you with a, a need of physical favor, and you have all these ideas of how they should advance spiritually, the Baal Shem taught us, step one is help a Jew physically. And only then will the person be interested in knowing what you have to say as the as the statement of the wise man, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Therefore, Moses only rebuked the Jewish people in, in the first day of Shvat on the, at a time when he had already defeated all the nations around Israel. So, again, the, just, to, just to summarize what we learned today. Number one, the month of Shvat is about Yosef about helping Jews discover that they are not strangers, they are God's children. Number two, the month of Shvat is about translating the Torah into other languages, again for the same purpose, to help people discover that God is talking to them in their language. And therefore Moses himself translates the Torah to all languages. Number three, the month of Shvat is associated with the transfer of energy from the unholy, from the holy to the unholy, again the same message that don't be satisfied being in your comfort zone and doing things that you're comfortable with at a time when there are people who are estranged and disenfranchised from Judaism, you have to go and reach out. What will happen just like the Jewish people 
left Egypt with the bones of Joseph, so to the way to leave this exile is by going in the path of Yosef, the path of the Friedrich Rebbe. And the previous Rebbe's name actually, uh, he has two names, Yosef and Yitzchak. Yitzchak means happiness, which highlights the way to reach out to another Jew is, again, not with criticism, but with happiness and joy, helping them discover their value, their, their closeness with God, how they are a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a daughter of Rebecca, Rachel, Leah, and Sarah. Help them discover that they belong, that they're not a stranger. This is the way that we will very soon merit to see Mashiach Zakenu. Achayim, we should merit to see this happen right away today. Achayim Amen.